Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, April 14th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's tonight's top stories. Tonight. In a historic victory, Fed surrendered to American citizens. And the resistance that they got made it sound like enough is enough with the federal government. We're drawing a line in the sand right here. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Well, there was a huge victory over the weekend. An epic showdown took place between federal agents and Bundy Ranch supporters. The BLM was forced to back down over fear of a Waco-style confrontation. is now moving forward toward the barrier. The police have been telling everybody they are going to shoot if we don't move back. People are moving forward with their hands in the air, holding flags with both hands in the air. It's a mixture of people on foot, as you can see, people on foot and cowboys. Time to talk upstairs with Metro. All right, push these people back up off the gate. Push them back up off the gate. We're going to work to release these cattle. Listen to me. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with you, but I need you to back them up. I understand what you're doing, and you will get that time. That's all right. We're back. We're not playing this I know, I get that. We're going to push them back up off the gate for right now. I'm going to work with you and you. I'll allow you two to come in with me. You want to come in with me? I'm going to come in with you. You've got my word, but no one's taking you with me. If you want to stay there, that's great. Let's go do your thing. Let's go do your thing. Let's go do your thing. We'll, we'll make sure that we're going to need some help if they decide that they're going to pull those pins. But I need, it's only going to be Bundy and his sons. No, that's no, it. it's the people or not. And you guys need to leave. Okay. You need to leave. That's, and then, that's and the And I'm turn. telling you, you need to de-escalate the situation. No, I'm imploring upon you to respond to the situation. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. You, you are on the battle score. Okay. And there's time. There's a time. No, there's a time. There's a time. There's a time. We're doing that. No, the but time. But you need to push these people back so they can do the same thing. Push them back so they can do the same thing. No, you we respect your authority as county. It was like a scene straight out of a Western. Amazing scenes unfolded on Saturday as Bundy supporters and cowboys on horseback faced off against ARM, Bureau of Land Management agents, and police. They were demanding that hundreds of cattle seized by the BLM over a grazing rights dispute be released from a nearby corral. Now, feds and law enforcement at one point were threatening to shoot protesters dead, but Bundy supporters fearlessly held their ground and then began advancing on the corral. Hundreds of cattle were eventually released, and BLM agents left the scene, which was a remarkable victory for property rights activists against big government. That the BLM is going to cease this operation. <laughs> However, the battle for Bunkerville, as it's being called, is far from over. The Bureau of Land Management has vowed to continue its pursuit of Clive and Bundy, asserting that no deal has been made to cease its case against the Nevada cattle rancher, and they will pursue administratively and judicially for the million dollars in grazing fees it claims Bundy owes the feds. So even though we know this isn't the end of the battle for Bunkerville, it was a very powerful moment in the modern American liberty movement. 
Bundy and his family were able to stand up against the federal government and stand their ground, protect their life and their property because of the Second Amendment. And now we know that that's why it is written exactly the way it is written, unfolding right before our eyes in real life. But what does Senator Harry Reid, who's embroiled in this whole thing, even though he's remained a little mum over the last few weeks, what does he have to say about this? Is there anything you would like to say about what's going on down south with Clive Bundy and the BLM? Well, it's not over. Uh, you know, we can't have an American people that violate the law and just walk away from it. So it's not over. And Senator Harry Reid looks like a knockoff Agent Smith right there. And perhaps he knows something that we don't. Sheriff Mack told Ben Swan today, Mack said that he has received intelligence from multiple credible sources inside the BLM and the Las Vegas Metro that there is no question that the federal government is planning a raid on the Bundy home and the homes of their children who live on the property. According to Mack, the so-called retreat was nothing more than theatrics. It was a ploy to get people to back off, to get people out of the way. They weren't expecting us to get this amount of people here, and they were surprised by the numbers, and so they wanted a way to get us out of here. This was a ploy to get us out, and then they're going after the Bundys. But Reed said something else that was interesting. He said we can't have Americans breaking the law and getting away with it. But apparently he's being very selective in choosing just which American citizens are going to be prosecuted for breaking the law. We have many reports of the big banks laundering hundreds of billions of dollars for drug cartels. HSBC laundered money for terrorists. And Indeed, it was drug money that kept the banks afloat at the height of the global financial crisis. Now, if an average American citizen gets caught with a tiny little bit of pot, they're going to jail. But drug money continues to be funneled through HSBC and other big banks to support terrorists who are going to buy guns and bullets to kill our soldiers overseas for these wars. But... All those banks and their shady dealings are what caused the economic collapse in the first place. So shouldn't they be prosecuted for that? Let's see what does the attorney general think about that. I am concerned that the size of some of these institutions becomes so large that it does become difficult for us to um, to prosecute them when we are hit with um, indications that if you do prosecute, if you do bring a criminal charge, uh, it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps even the world economy. And I think that is a function of the fact that some of these institutions have become too large. And it's not just these huge globalist banksters that are too big for Eric Holder to jail. We've also got an heir to the DuPont fortune who can rape his three-year-old daughter. And rather than go to jail, he's given probation because the judge rules he wouldn't fare well in prison. So you see, if you've got enough money, you can rape children and get away with it. But if you're a cattle rancher who's just trying to make an honest living and whose cattle are grazing on the land that their family has been working on for 140 years, Harry Reid wants you to pay. But let's shine the light back where it deserves to be on you, Harry Reid. Let's take this back, way back to uh, last month. There are a lot of media outlets who are reporting that you know, the solar farm plans were miles, if not hundreds of miles away, or that that ENN project fell through last July. But we just want to emphasize the senator's plan for solar projects in Nevada isn't limited to the shelved solar farm near Laughlin. This is a picture of Reed from March 2014. He's breaking ground for a new solar farm about 35 miles from the Bundy Ranch. And the developments of solar farms just like this one is exactly why Senator Reed was using the BLM, whose director is Reed's former senior advisor, to push Bundy out of the Gold Butte area his family has worked for over 140 years. The BLM specifically stated in documents that it wanted Bundy and his cattle out of the area as part of the agency's regional mitigation strategy for the Dry Lake Solar Energy Zone. Now, the BLM announced in a March 14th press release that current action building on the Western Solar Energy Plan um, is a, it's a plan to expand domestic energy production and spur development of solar energy on public lands in six western states, uh, Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, and Utah. So if you aren't one of those cattle ranchers in Nevada, it might be coming to a state near you soon. 
Now, the regional mitigation strategy for the Dry Lake Solar Energy Zone is just the first of several pilot plans to be developed by the BLM. So let's not miss the point here. Now, probably a lot, we don't have a lot of politicians speaking out about this because they don't want the light sh shining on them because it's not just Harry Reid who's involved in these little backdoor deals. They're all, these <laughs> career politicians are all involved in these little deals. But this is Agenda 21. This is crony capitalism right here, forcing people off their land with fines and regulations so that you can you know, force these states to move to alternative energy by 2020, that's the cutoff, and then you shut down their coal plants and whatever other means they have to create energy in the area. And then you, as the uh, politician, get a little cut of the deal when you allow these foreign companies to swoop in and then provide this solar energy that you're forcing upon the people and then selling it as domestic energy. Meanwhile, the money is funneling to foreign corporations. So that's why we're kind of, we don't really know how they're going to spin this. A lot of people want to take Reed down, but if they do, it's going to shine the light on some backdoor deals they might be involved in. So it's it's pretty exciting what happened there this weekend. I think a lot of people are in a bit of a kerfuffle over what's going on. But if the situation at the Bundy Ranch proved anything, it is that Americans are fed up with this overreaching federal government. And this weekend was our line in the sand to remind the federal government they work for us and not the other way around. The resistance that they got made it sound like enough is enough with the federal government. We're drawing a line in the sand right here. And it drew people from all around the country who basically said to the feds, quit your heavy handed theft of property and, and, and act like you're a normal litigant and not God almighty. That was Judge Andrew Napolitano appearing on Fox News to denounce the federal government's operation against Cliven Bundy. Napolitano said the feds were forced to back down because they had suffered a PR nightmare, pointing out that Bundy lost his case in a federal court, but that the case should have been tried in a state court. And that's what Bundy's been saying this entire time. It's a state's rights issue. How are you going to have a uh, federal court case where it's the feds versus a private citizen? So that doesn't even make sense. And Napolitano also said that instead of filing a lien on Bundy's property, which is what the government should have done, what they're authorized to do, what they would have done in any other case, instead they wanted this huge show of force. They swooped in with assault rifles, aimed and ready, and stole this guy's property, Napolitano said. They stole his cattle, and they didn't have the right to do that. That's theft and they should have been arrested by state officials. But we already saw how the sheriff there was responding to the federal government and how they were overreaching in his state. And Napolitano also scoffed at the ridiculous First Amendment area, which was promptly torn down, saying it was miles away from where all the action was taken, and it was a utterly repellent zone, the federal government emasculating the First Amendment rights of the protesters. So a lot of people are likening what happened over the weekend as the American Spring, uh, definitely a huge moment for the modern American liberty movement. And we will just have to see the Fed's next move. Um, hopefully it's not going to be a world-shaking event, but that's what a lot of people are predicting is going to be happening over the next year or so due to this blood moon and the upcoming Tetrad, which isn't really that uncommon, but it just hasn't happened in a while, and it does happen to fall on a lot of auspicious Jewish holidays. So this upcoming Blood Moon Tetrad, it's going to be begin tonight. And if the events of the last weekend were any indication of just what kind of an effect this is going to have, we may be seeing some more explosive events in the future. Now, the moon will turn blood red tonight at 1 a.m. on the East Coast, peaking at 3 a.m., and a more comfortable viewing time for those of you on the West Coast. It'll start at about 10 p.m. this evening. Now, coming up, David Knight is going to be speaking with Jerome Corsi. This will be an excerpt from him. He was fresh back from Nevada today hosting the Alex Jones radio show. And he spoke with Jerome Corsi about the foreign development aspect of the land grab in Nevada. So that's coming up.